So a brand new article released on the Warrior Cats website teasing future books. And we've learned that they're very excited about Super Edition 17 and Super Edition 18. Which, under current Warrior Cats release patterns, will come out in 2024 and 2025 respectively. Two books, they say, would be connected in their plot. In Super Edition 18 specifically, they say they came up with the idea for a year ago. So, three years prior to the book's release. That's some serious planning ahead. I'm sure internally, Warrior Cats does this sort of thing all the time, but it's completely unprecedented for them to talk about it. So naturally, I started doing exactly what they would want from a post like this. Fan speculation. What aspect of Warrior Cats lore is deep enough for two entire super editions? What long form story can be told where, in the middle, it will most likely switch from one cat's perspective to another? And on top of all that, they say Super Edition 17 would chronologically be taking place at the same time as the Starless Clan 6, so it would have to pull from something relatively recent. And all my thoughts went straight to Bristle Frost. Her falling into the dark water and fading forever could very well be the most dramatic event to happen in Warrior Cats in the last 10 years, let alone the last 5. So I'm reasonably certain that at the very least, the book A Light in the Mist would have to have some sort of connection to these new super editions. The end of the Birkin Code just introduced so much lore about the Dark Forest and Star Clan that they've left open since. And I think all of that ends with Bristlefrost being brought back from the dark water from her state of nothingness in Super Edition 18. It might sound like a huge leap in logic, but this video is just beginning. I have a lot to say. The Warrior Cats team admits they had the idea for Super Edition 18 last year, in 2022, a year after A Light in the Mist was released. So we can't really look at quotes in A Light in the Mist and say, look, this proves Bristlefrost's death isn't permanent. Bristlefrost's return, if these Super Editions were to be about it, wouldn't have been planned out at that point. So there were essentially two things we need to prove to make a strong case for Bristlefrost returning. One, we need to prove that retconning Bristlefrost's death wouldn't upset the lore too much. The Warrior Cats writers have the power to write anything in the books regardless of how much or little it makes sense, if they simply want to. So as long as there's some way to twist the events of the book to make a return possible, we're golden here. We don't have to prove any intention to undo her death, just that there is means of undoing her death if they wanted to. Because the more important half is this. Two, we need to prove that they are excited about Bristlefrost. The biggest piece of information we have about the new Super Editions is the fact that they are excited for them. If we can determine that Bristlefrost's character arc is the most exciting thing for them, while it wouldn't prove anything 100%, it would give us a case for saying she's a strong candidate. But first, part 1. Is it even possible? Bristlefrost is gone, faded, non-existent. To bring her back would have huge implications on the lore they have set up since Omen of the Stars. It could mean it was possible for Tiger Star to come back or Snow Tuft or Spotted Leaf, and it would take the significance of the fact that these cats faded all away. Is there a way out of this problem? Yes. Well, yes, if they really wanted one, because Bristlefrost is not faded in the same way those other cats are. Cats like Snow Tuft were straight up killed, bleeding out until they were no more. Bristlefrost is most often described as just being gone sinking into dark water until she was no more. The dark water in Light in the Mist was a result of Ashfur severing connections between living and spirits, and the balance of their world falling off until all worlds started to decay, with the dark forest falling first. So it could most reasonably be assumed that dark water represents a rift in the dark forest realm. That falling in would basically mean you fell out of the dark forest, and being on the outside of reality, you stop existing. That's what we were to assume happened to Bristlefrost, Ashfur, and Red Willow. Snow Tuft was killed by having his life force ripped away in this dimension, while a cat like Bristlefrost was killed by having her life force sucked out of their dimension completely. When Ivypool and Fernsong ask Grootsbrain to use his earth powers to check for certain if Bristlefrost is truly gone, he doesn't find her, but he does see a vision of their hypothetical kits. The same vision Bristlefrost imagines before her death. It feels very open-ended, like they could always go back on it and say he actually did censor, just didn't fully understand his powers at that point. We don't have to prove A Light in the Mist was written to hint at Bristlefrost's return, just that the ending is written vaguely enough to make a return possible. And this is where we can get at. We know of Star Clan, the Dark Forest, and the Living World. 
but perhaps there is room for another realm in Warrior Cats. A realm between the spaces of those worlds. Star Clan is in the sky and the stars. The Dark Forest is, surprisingly, also in the sky. A lot of people call it Cat Hell, but in reality, it borders Star Clan, and another name for it is the Place of No Stars. So it's just places in the sky where no stars are present. Meaning that another realm that exists beneath the living world is still up for grabs. Maybe this other place has some connection to the ancient cat Rock, who is immortal and trapped in the tunnels. I remember when Jay there running into portals underground let him time travel. There's more to this underground magic waiting for warrior cats to explore it. Maybe if Root Spring went deep into the tunnels, he actually would be able to sense Bristlefrost's presence. And then at some point we can explore this underworld, where Ashfur, Bristlefrost, and Red Willow were unknowingly sucked in. What's important to note is that I'm not saying this is exactly how Warrior Cats would do it. Something like this is far too elaborate for me to predict all the details. All I'm saying is that this is one way Warrior Cats could do it, to show that there is absolutely a way to explain a potential Bristlefrost return and write a story about it. But don't worry, if you think this is stupid, there is the more practical side to this theory. Let's stop looking at the books and just look at what's been posted on the Warrior Cats website. Does the story team even like Bristlefrost? Well, yes. A thousand times yes. They were so passionate about writing Bristlefrost's death that they posted an entire article tribute to her only a month after A Light in the Mist was released. It was rather fast for them to post such a major spoiler in such a detailed way. They do reaffirm what is said in the book about Bristlefrost being gone for good, body and soul. But again, this article was posted December 2021, while they came up with the idea for Super Edition 18 close to September 2022. So what they said in the article wouldn't mean anything other than they like Bristlefrost. In the meantime, they have kept Rootspring relevant in the Starless Clan arc, even including him on a quest. So he's definitely on standby if the story ever needed him again. And another cat related to Bristlefrost, Ivypool, was included on a Super Edition poll. Going off the fact that Riverstar and Misty Star of all cats are also here, I do think the choices from this poll specifically came from a place of passion for the characters, rather than just popular cats. This poll dropped before Light in the Mist did, while Bristlefrost's death was still very fresh on the story team's mind. So I personally would assume that the Ivy Pool story would have reflected on the aftermath of Bristlefrost's death and how broken she is at the end of the book. And if we jump to a Starless Clan, now Squirrel Flight is about to choose a deputy, and Ivy Pool is one of four cats she could realistically choose for the position, and they would likely be serving at the time a Starless Clan rolls around when the Super Edition is supposed to take place. Ivy Pool did get second place in the poll, as did One Star in a previous poll, and One Star got a Super Edition after Leopard Star. It's very likely an Ivy Pool Super Edition would follow River Star, which, if it did, would put it directly into the 2024 Super Edition 17 space. And what is Ivy Pool known for? Well, one, her time spent in the Dark Forest, and two, her role as Bristlefrost's mother. Both key elements in the plot of A Light in the Mist. It's not a far leap to say that the Dark Forest and her grief for Bristlefrost would play a large role in a book all about her. The question is, how would this lead to Bristlefrost returning? The poll shows they had an idea for an Ivy Pool Super Edition in 2021, but their idea for Super Edition 18 was conceptualized in 2022. So if the idea for Super Edition 17 came from a time they were completely certain Bristlefrost was gone, they would have to completely change the plot for it to connect to Super Edition 18. And there's no evidence that they are revising Super Edition 17 at all. Well, no evidence except for the fact that they literally said they are currently revising the manuscript for Super Edition 17. So, if they can revise a potential Ivy Pool Super Edition as late as now, they could have easily made bigger revisions a year ago. The fact of the matter is that Super Edition 17 most certainly had its story reworked for a perfect connecting point in the Super Edition 18. Warrior Cat's struggles filling the pages of even a single Super Edition. Riverstar's home was enough evidence for that. If they thought a story was worth two Super Editions, they must be truly excited. And the most likely thing to excite them would have to be the crazy fantasy stuff we got in A Light in the Mist. They wrote an article about the departure from realism in Warrior Cats, ultimately concluding they find it fun and intriguing to have a touch of magic, to depart from realism from time to time. 
Since the Starless Clan has so far been mostly grounded in the real world, I think they're due for another departure. Also, they mention in the article how Super Edition 18 is departing from the main story, so a lot of departure going on. Also, in their little Q&A article this entire video stemmed from, there's a detail that I haven't mentioned yet. The Super Edition 17 and 18 announcement was just question 1. Question 3 is also of interest. It talks about how they often plan things far in advance when it comes to major plot elements, and they cite Bristlefrost's death as something they planned two and a half years in advance. Something they planned before anything in Broken Code 2, 3, 4, or 5. If that isn't evidence that Bristlefrost is the most passionately written character arc in recent Warrior Cats books, I don't know what is. And the fact that they are spilling all this passion for Bristlefrost, two questions below saying they have a similar passion for these upcoming super editions, I just get a feeling there's some connection. Ending their Bristlefrost story they planned so far in advance created this hole, and they want to reinvigorate the passion that hasn't been matched in the Astarlos clan arc. And that could be the Bristlefrost rescue arc. Super Edition 17, Ivy Pool. Originally intended to be your run-of-the-mill Super Edition, where she goes on a quest, visits the Dark Forest to fight some cats, learns what it means to be deputy, until the writing team realized they wanted to do something crazy. So the story is revised a little to involve Rootspring and Bristlefrost. It's the perfect spark for an Ivy Pool journey. Rootspring could pick up a trace of Bristlefrost with his Earth powers. One thing leads to another, and Ivy Pool is going on a quest to the Dark Forest to investigate her lost daughter. And at the end of the Super Edition, they wind up in a mysterious new realm. The Underworld, maybe? And in this world, Bristlefrost is there. Cliffhanger. And the jump of perspective could work so well. Because Super Edition 18, it could be Bristlefrost. The start of the Super Edition could go back in time to when she first landed in this world. Maybe she met up with Red Willow in her attempts to navigate it. And later in the book is when Ivy Pool and Rootspring land there. And they all probably have to fight Ashfur before they can escape. Does this sound like fanfiction? Yeah, a little. But to be fair, so does Ashfur's ghost possessing Bramblestar. I could be totally wrong with all this, and even if I am right about some details, there will still be many details involved that I am missing. But ultimately, this video is just for fun. If I see any smidgen of evidence for something interesting, I just gotta talk about it and make crazy theories. Crazy, stupid theories. I know a lot of people look at the idea of her returning and say, oh, this is dumb, it would make her sacrifice pointless, and ruin a light in the mist. But I respectfully disagree. Nothing changes the fact that Bristlefrost jumped at Ashford knowing she would never come back, and the depression that Rootspring fell into after the fact. There's no epilogue being added into a light in the mist that says, by the way, Bristlefrost didn't actually make a sacrifice and she's fine. A light in the mist was what it was, and the new Super Editions will be a completely separate story. One doesn't have to ruin the other. And that's all I have to say for now. The next Warrior Cats book is just around the corner, so I imagine more discussion is on the way soon. Alright, bye everyone!